Aurelia Vardaxis, the Assistant Vice President of Alumni and Donor Engagement at Albright College, and I'd like to welcome you to our Partners in Pride series. Um, we began this series back in August of 2020 to help raise awareness about unique programs across campus benefiting the Albright community. And this evening, we're going to be talking about our Costa Rica uh, project. And we're going to have an interview uh, with Steve Meck, who's a professor of biology, uh, about the coursework, the research, and learning experiences available at Albright's property in Costa Rica, which we call Casa de Gratitude uh, in, in Rio de Sueños. Um, this property was gifted to the college by an alum, Max Jackson, class of 75, um, in honor of his wife uh, to make unique opportunities in education and research available for Albright faculty and students. Our moderator this evening will be Thalia Williamson, class of 2019, um, who has visited the Costa Rica property twice on class projects. And she is currently working in our student accessibility and advocacy department here at Albright. So I'm going to hand it over to Thalia. Thank you. Um, so I'll just start us off with our first question. Um, Dr. Mech, could you tell us a little bit about the history of how Albright acquired the property in Costa Rica? Sure. So as uh, Aurelia said, that uh, this was a gift to uh, Albright from Max Jackson. And Max and his wife purchased the property originally as a retirement property. And unfortunately, Max's wife uh, became ill and passed away just a couple of years before they were planning to move down to the property. And uh, because Max and his wife both uh, were Albright alums and were uh, very um, thankful for the education that Albright provided, they decided to give Albright the, the property. That was their long-term plan anyway, and Max just moved it up when his wife passed. And so we actually uh, started conversation back in 2009, and I went down with a few other faculty members and uh, the then provost to visit the property. And then when we got, finally got uh, became owners of the property in 2014, we started planning on taking trips down there. And so it was a fairly lengthy process in terms of uh, the typical undergraduate career, but it was a relatively short time in uh, the long-term things. This is the map for, of uh, Costa Rica. So here's the Osa Peninsula. And so the capital uh, is San Jose, it's right there. And Rio de Sueños is right there. And so it's very near uh, the coast. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Cortez, the port of Cortez is right about here. And this is the uh, Serape uh, mangroves. And that's actually a uh, Ramsar site, which is a world protected wetland area. And so we're just north of that. Um, and there, it's really not near any city. And that, so you really have to just look at the map. It's near a village of Tres Rios. And there's another Tres Rios, which is up right near San Jose, not the same thing. <laughs> um, and so uh, Tres Rios is the village it's by and um, Coronado, is another little village uh, that's more towards the coast from us. But Coronado has, I think, about 500 residents and Trace Rios has about 40. So when we're saying small, we mean small. Awesome. So what benefits does this property give Albright? So the, there are several uh, potential benefits. The, the biggest one, obviously, is being able to take classes down to a uh, tropical country and actually do field work um, from a biology point of view that, um, and see things, um, but also to experience the uh, local culture and to be able to interact with uh, local people and see how um, the, you know, other people in other countries live both uh, within nature and in uh, cities and, and urban areas. It also allows us to have, um, project or other uh, colleges and universities actually use our property and they, they can rent rent the property out and they're they can then expose 
their students to both Albright and Costa Rica. And we actually have a, a fairly good working relationship with one of the tour operators down there who arranges our tours, but also works with several other uh, colleges and universities, mostly in Pennsylvania, but uh, really all across the US and, and the globe. And they've several of them have used our property as well. So when Albright isn't being, the Albright property isn't being occupied by the Albright students and these other colleges, how is it maintained? So part of Max's bequest was to, um, he, he actually split up the, the property into smaller areas and a couple of the areas were gifted to the uh, young ladies and the gentleman who worked on the property for he and his wife. And uh, Costa Rica has a very nice program where the government, if you have a piece of property, the government will pay a certain amount of money towards your first house, building your first house. And so um, one of the young ladies has actually built a house on her portion of the property. And we have retained her and her sister to help uh, maintain the property interior. And then um, there's also a, a gentleman who takes care of the exterior property and they just come come in a couple of times a week to make sure everything's uh, stable and uh, clean and all that. Awesome. So what are, is unique about the ecosystem in Costa Rica? And can you tell us a little bit about the unique flora and fauna that can be found there? Yeah, there's, um, Costa Rica is a, an amazing place to visit. And, you know, you can see, I guess, back on this shoulder, the uh, um, sloth that I uh, took a picture of on one of the trips. Um, and just seeing all the biodiversity down there is always a, a lot of fun for me. And I think the students really enjoy it as well. Um, actually, I'm gonna share my screen here real quick. So we have uh, a website that explains a lot of this. And on this website, uh, which you can get through the, uh, you can reach it through the Experiential Learning Center. Um, if you just go to Albright in Costa Rica, that's this page. And um, I'm going to skip down here. Down at the bottom, there's actually a gallery of photos from a trip that uh, um, I took with some alumni and uh, some of the uh, um, administration as well. And so they put this uh, slideshow together. So you can see some pictures there. But also, um, in terms of what we see on our trips, because we travel around the country, we see a lot of uh, very different uh, flora and fauna. Um, there's uh, kind of the classic parrot um, this, uh, and then the uh, macaws, those are uh, moderately common in certain areas. Then we have uh, the toucan, trogons are a, a deep forest bird and they're, they're a lot of fun to find. And then on the beaches, you can find some really kind of bizarre things like, you know, this hawk sitting out on the beach and then uh, the uh, brown footed boobies. We also see all sorts of mammals, the sloths again, coatis, um, they're one of my favorites. Uh, you can see that uh, a lot of coatis around. And of course, uh, there's several species of monkeys. There's actually four species of monkeys in Costa Rica. And on most trips, we see at least three. So, um, and there are squirrels. Uh, they're much more colorful, but much more secretive than North American squirrels. Um, when Dr. Campbell and I first started going down to Costa Rica, we started a program where we would actually miss net bats and record their calls. And so we actually handled the bats, um, those of us that have the rabies vaccines and such. Um, and so it's a lot of fun to actually catch the bats. And then this is a shot of, uh, we were at a um, forest preserve and the students were watching the uh, um, capuchin monkeys cross the trail above them. And so that kind of, you get that close to the animals and it's a lot of fun. And then there's also a lot of herps. Um, being a vertebrate biologist, I admit most of my photos are uh, um, of vertebrates, but you have the uh, red-eyed tree, tree frog, the uh, dendrobates, the green and black uh, poison dart frog. Then you have the iguanas and lots of crocodiles all over the place. And um, then when we go out at night, we can sometimes find some of these uh, really cool, like this leopard gecko and things like that. Um, so that's kind of it for the uh, biodiversity that, you know, I, I've got good shots of, but it's, we structure the trips, our trips, 
uh, for the biology course so that we actually see a wide variety of uh, organisms, both plants and animals, although my focus is obviously on the animals. Can students take a Costa Rica and incorporate the experience into their studies? So right now, I'm the uh, only professor in at Albright that has been taking course taking classes down to Costa Rica. Um, there were two courses planned for uh, 2020. Um, unfortunately, because of uh, COVID, they couldn't go. Um, but one of them was a an adventure sports and sociology course taught by a couple of the professors from sociology, um, Dr. Chuck Brown and Dr. Brian Jennings. And the other course, uh, they, they were thinking about doing it actually in um, this semester, so uh, spring of 2021. And it is a uh, course that combines art and biology. And that's taught by uh, Dr. David Osgood and Dr. Kristen Woodward. And so their idea is to look at how um, the, the different approaches uh, for art, you learn the techniques first or you learn the theory first and then the techniques and in biology it's kind of reversed and so their their idea is to take uh, students from both fields and kind of teach them how uh, the different approaches work um, but my students we go down and we kind of do a tropical ecology course where we learn about a whole bunch of different areas um, within Costa Rica and Costa Rica is really fascinating because it has a wide variety of ecosystems but it's about the size of West Virginia and so you can go from, you know, the cloud forest, high elevation, cold weather, all the way down to the warm, sunny beach. And so it, it, that kind of diversity um, in climate leads to a wide diversity of um, organisms. And I teach the students how that differs. We also do things like uh, tour coffee plantations and learn how organic coffee is different than regular coffee and the benefits of that. Um, and that kind of experience, it, it brings students out into the field and, and not just, you know, the field literally in terms of biology, but into um, life in other cultures. And I think that is a lifelong experience that um, many students should experience if they can. And that really was one of the goals of uh, Max's gift to Albright. And so in a lot of ways, I feel um, obligated to Max to do the best I can in running this property to get as many students the ex that experience as I possibly can. Um, when we took the first class down to all uh, to uh, Rio de Sueños, um, I was constantly in contact with Max, and I would send him pictures and talk to him uh, over uh, Facebook about what we were doing and, and things. And he was, I think, very appreciative of that. So, and he was actually on the uh, trip with the alumni and the uh, um, president uh, a couple of years ago. So he was, that was a fun trip for him, I think. Nice. Um, so when you take a class down, what would a normal class trip consist of? What do they learn? Okay. So um, that's kind of the other set of slides that I had set up. So again, one of the things we do is we travel around the country and each year, each class that I take down, I kind of change up a lot of the locations that we go to besides Rio de Sueños. And I do that partly so that we can uh, explore different parts of the country or, or expose uh, different things, partly because of scheduling, but also it's because I don't want to go to the same place every time. I haven't been all over the country. So I get to use this as kind of my vacation, if you will. Um, this is actually uh, the house. So this is um, the Casa de Gratitude at Rio de Sueños. And then we also go, uh, frequently we go to Arenal, which is a volcano up in the north central part of the country. And Rio de Sueños is actually in the uh, southwestern corner. And so there, um, this is about as far apart as you can get and still stay in the country. Um, and Arenal Volcano is a, a beautiful uh, higher elevation uh, place and most days the volcano is actually shrouded in clouds and this happened to be one of the days where it wasn't so I got to get, get a very nice shot of that. Um, 
We also go to uh, Cerro Lodge, which is on the um, Pacific side, uh, about halfway down the country. And it has, uh, so it's right at the border between a dry tropical forest and a moist tropical forest. And right where those two meet, you get to see a lot of different organisms that if you go to one or the other, you would, you would miss kind of the interaction. And so I think the students being able to see that interaction and that shift, even though it's all still a tropical country, but seeing that shift in uh, the organisms is uh, pretty amazing. And then this is a, a picture of uh, Marenko Lodge on the uh, Osa Peninsula, which we've gone to a few times. And the Osa Peninsula is actually one of the larger peninsulas. It's the Southern Peninsula in the Pacific side of Costa Rica. And it is actually all a national, well, pretty much all a national park now, Corcovado National Park. It was their first national park and it is by far their most diverse and well-protected national park. And there are only a few places you can stay around there. And if you actually go into the park, you have to have a timed ticket and you only so many people are allowed into the park at a time. And so that's a really neat experience, I think, for the students. Both times we've been there, um, we've actually seen um, the, uh, um, uh, I just blanked on it. <clears throat> um, anyway, it's one of the larger mammals. Um, and so it, it's really just a fascinating trip. And then we also do some fun things like stop at the Baldy Hot Springs and, and things like that. Um, but then we do lots of hiking around and the hiking, because it is a field uh, ecology course, my courses, we do hiking and it's weather independent. And so this was actually a very long hike we did um, one year as uh, Thalia last because she was there. Um, a lot of mud, but it was a, it was a great way to kind of explore um, the tropical forest. And that was the first day and that really um, got the students, I think, in the mood for field trips. Um, and this was the uh, uh, coffee plantation uh, tour, but we do uh, some just playing in the uh, creeks and beaches. Um, students get to rest occasionally. Uh, and we also do some uh, fun things like we uh, can uh, take these boats out on the uh, canals around um, some areas and actually see some of the wildlife um, that you wouldn't see at other times. And so being, being on these boats, you get to see things that you might not see um, other times. And I think the other thing that I kind of glossed over is on these trips, because the way I structure my classes on these trips, we're together as a group all the time. And so we really, I think by the end of the trip kind of feel like we're a second family with all the positives and some negatives that that entails where you have groups of people that, you know, that there's gonna be some friction but learning to deal with that, I think personally is a life skill and learning to deal with it in a situation where these are really some of the few people you can actually communicate with regularly. Um, so I, I think it, it differs a lot. So, um, but I, I, so the, the, that's a kind of a long winded story, but we, we take the students around the country, we show them different biomes, they do some science, they do some birding, take notes on it. They, uh, on, on our property, we uh, trap bats, we trap small mammals, and they learn a lot about the process of science, but also just how to appreciate biodiversity. And I think that's the major goal of my class there. So I guess you kind of answered that question a little bit, but what do you hope students take away from their time in Costa Rica? And if anything, um, what do you hope they learn? So, the, you know, the, there's the, of course, just the raw material. Do they learn, you know, the difference between the, some of the bird species? Do they learn how to um, take good field notes and things like that? But we could really do that up in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And so the, the big thing I think they need to learn is um, to appreciate the biodiversity and to see how other cultures can live in 
a, a very uh, biodiverse, uh, rich area, and still have, you know, a healthy, happy, happy lifestyle. And they're they're not nearly as wealthy. You know, the average Costa Rican is not nearly as wealthy as the average U.S. citizen. And to see that firsthand and appreciate that, but recognize that it, it's not um, to me recognize that it's not about monetary wealth. It's about, you know, appreciative and, and uh, love of life. And, you know, the Costa Rica motto is Pura Vida, love life, basically. And so that is, is something that I think that uh, I hope that our students get out of those, out of these trips. Are there any educational opportunities in Costa Rica beyond studies in science? Um, there are, uh, like I said, the, the other two classes that I mentioned um, through uh, Albright. Um, and then we've also uh, started to open discussions with um, some potential internships, like with the hospitals down there. And um, our, our friend who runs a tour company, he actually has his own uh, um, biopreserve that he is very interested in getting students down there to not only uh, learn and teach biology, but also to educate the local school children and things like that. And so we're working towards getting some conversations going where we can send students down there to really um, live in the communities for a more extended period of time. And actually more recently, uh, there is the potential of us being able to send down some sporting teams to play some of the national uh, uh, and local clubs down there. Um, and so we're working on trying to iron that out with uh, our tour operator. And would that be soccer, I'm assuming? Actually, that could be um, right as it stands, it really could be almost any sport. Okay. Um, it, it's a matter of finding some other group to play with down there. And we're, it's still in the very early discussion stages. Mm -hmm. we're, we're hoping to move forward on that. I'm, I'm gonna continue to talk with our tour operator um, over the next couple of weeks or months actually. Okay. Have you been able to return to Costa Rica since the pandemic? And how is the country of Costa Rica dealing with the pandemic? So early on, the pandemic didn't uh, hit Costa Rica as early as it did the US. And it wasn't until actually about May that they really started to see that upswing of um, cases. Uh, I know several people uh, from the US, several uh, uh, fellow faculty members from other country or other universities that were planning on going down for their spring breaks and they had to cancel their trips. And so um, a lot of people just kind of uh, had to quit the trips uh, for long for an extended period of time. And so the biggest thing uh, for Costa Rica really is has been they, they've been hit very hard economically because uh, Costa Rica's main industry is tourism. And because nobody could travel there from their home country, and for a while Costa Rica wasn't accepting uh, travelers, the tour industry got hit very, very hard. And so they've been working on trying to rebound somewhat uh, from that. My understanding is that um, the case rate in Costa Rica never reached the levels that it did in the US. Um, they do have a nationalized health system. And so I believe, uh, I haven't actually talked with uh, my uh, friend down there yet about this specifically, but I believe that they are um, vaccinating people in the country fairly readily um, because they, they've got a fairly good uh, national health system and because they really need the tourism to come back. They've been working very hard to do that. So um, I, I think it's starting to recover. I know, um, I don't know of any colleges that have sent uh, groups down recently since the uh, um, COVID started, but um, I know Max has talked about um, getting back down there. He was actually planning on going down last October. Um, but delayed that for obvious reasons. Um, I think he's planning on going down in um, May or June uh, this year. 
Um, I'm actually planning on going down with a group from East Stroudsburg in um, early August this year. So um, my wife and I will be vaccinated by then so we can go down safely. Awesome. Okay, so this next question is kind of for me. So I traveled to Costa Rica twice with the class. And so the question was, what do you find unique about the experience? Um, and I guess I had never done field work really before that. So it was very interesting to get that opportunity to actually do field work. Um, and I was also a part-time student when I first went. So I didn't know anyone. And um, I actually became a full-time student after this trip because Dr. Mech and Dr. Campbell convinced me to become a full-time student. So um, it was actually a very life-changing experience for me, which was pretty awesome. Can I just ask, how do you think it changed your life aside from just becoming a full-time student at Albright? Yeah, so I was a student athlete at the University of Richmond and I became injured um, throughout those two years that I was there. Um, so I was hoping to get back into athletics and figure out my injury and go right back into athletics. Um, and before I didn't really think of myself as a biology student or really academically, I hadn't really thought of myself as a being an academic. So, um, going to Costa Rica and having that experience and having advisors who really encouraged me and wanted me to come to Albright and become an academic um, really made me think about myself in a whole new light, which really changed my life. I, and I guess that that's kind of what I, what I like about that, the way we teach that course is with the, you know, we do become really a family unit. Um, actually, the first year we went down in 2017, we weren't sure the beds were going to be built yet. And so the group we went down with, we warned them all ahead of time. But it, it really became such a family that the students started calling me dad and Dr. Campbell mom. And then our tour guide, uh, his name was Alex, and they called him T.O. Alex, Uncle Alex. And he loved that. And so it, it really is, um, you know, that kind of bonding. And I, I think we've changed a lot of lives in terms of helping students just, not just with their science and, and their, you know, their future, but also, you know, making connections that they didn't see before. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's some, that's that kind of experience you can't get in a typical classroom. Yeah, definitely, I agree. So we have two more questions. Um, what are your hopes for the future at Rio de Sueños? <laughs> I've got a lot of things that I would love to do with an unlimited budget. Um, <laughs> I, I would love to actually, so this is, the, the house was built really as kind of two studio apartments with a common area downstairs. And we took part of that common area and made it into two bunk rooms. And those two bunk rooms right now each have six total beds. So there's 12 beds for 12 students. And then the upstairs is for the uh, professors and the uh, tour guide. Um, so I would like to expand the uh, number of beds and either build an actual dorm or just expand out um, on some of, that, some of the uh, um, areas that we can downstairs so we can actually double the number of beds uh, to 24. I would also like to um, get it more used by other uh, other universities and colleges. Um, Alvernia was actually going to take uh, 24 students down uh, in May of last year, and obviously they can't they couldn't do that. Um, but we're starting to have more colleges and universities be interested in using our property because it's it's situated in an area where they don't really have any field stations or resorts that are easily accessible and relatively cheap. There is one up, up the road a little bit, but it's fairly expensive. It's run by Duke. And so it's uh, not an, a simple place to get to or a cheap place to get to. And so 
the tour operator that we work with really likes our property because it, it's uh, priced at a, at a good point for the smaller colleges and universities. And so I'd like to get more people using that. I would also love to set it up so that we can actually take a class of say 30 students down there with three faculty members and for an entire semester and teach four courses for the entire semester. So we'd each have our specialty course, like, you know, a biology course, maybe a sociology course and a foreign language course. And then that fourth course would be an interdisciplinary course where we all get together and, you know, do something. And I have to find the right faculty that are willing to do that. And then we have to figure out, of course, teaching loads back here and whether we can do it remotely or not. Uh, based on this past year, I think we could, but, um, I would like to see that kind of thing where we, we go down and use it for an entire semester and have the students kind of rotate who's doing what, you know, for a certain times students are, uh, some of the students are doing field work, others are out in the community learning and, and doing Spanish and sociology and things like that. I think that would be a really neat experience for the um, group. So how does, um opening the property up to other groups, how does that benefit Albright? Is there a collaboration in work or is there a monetary? Yeah, it's um, a, a lot, a little bit of both. Um, so the, the monetary is really, um, it, it's su such a small amount, it's basically to maintain the property. Okay. Uh, and it depends on, you know, it's prorated by how many students and things like that. Um, but we have had a couple of faculty members from other places like um, there was a faculty member from Villanova who happens to study a very interesting species of jumping spider that is a vegetarian jumping spider and spiders are almost always carnivorous but this one happens to be vegetarian and it lives on acacia trees and acacia trees house ants to protect the acacia tree and they reward the ants with these little uh, fruiting bodies well, it turns out the spiders eat the fruiting bodies. And so he's interested in studying how it is that the spiders can live on the acacia plants without getting attacked by the ants, because that's what the ants do for the acacia. Mm -hmm. And right where our property is, is the northern, bound, northern boundary of one of those species of vegetarian spiders. The, the southern boundary of the other vegetarian spider is uh, about four hours north. And so our property is actually a very good study site for him. And so that kind of collaboration um, where he can actually come and do science and then teach our students how to do some of the methodology so our students can then contribute to his work is something that we would like to see moving forward. And actually the last trip I did um, with students, uh, several of the students did basically repeat his work on County uh, figuring out how active the ants are during different periods of the day to see if that matches the spider um, activity. What do you find the most rewarding part about taking a class to Costa Rica? That, that's a, a tough question for me because I, I find the whole experience very rewarding. Um, there are um, I, I find, you know, the, the wonder that the students have when we see certain things or do certain things, um, I really get, I really enjoy that. Um, seeing students uh, bond in ways that you wouldn't expect them, like seeing, you know, student A and student B who you would never expect to get together on campus actually start doing, to get, doing things together and working together. Um, I, I find that very uh, rewarding. And, you know, just seeing students enjoy life while they learn and develop a love of learning is, I guess, what, what I really um, get a kick out of. But the seeing the overall dynamics change over the course of, you know, the, the two weeks were there or three weeks were there, depending on the year, um, is just fascinating to me. Um, so it, it kind of uh, satisfies my inner sociologist. Thank you so much, everybody who stuck with us until, you know, this late hour. This is a great dialogue.
if anybody has any other questions or uh, you know about Costa Rica or the property, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, and you know we'll hopefully plan another alumni trip and be able to take as many of you as uh, are willing and able to go. <laughs> <laughs>